Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Joy Noel, Feliz Navidad, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Life Day, or whatever it is that you celebrate in this galaxy or those far away. Welcome to the channel, I'm your host Big Red, and on today's journey we're here at the Disneyland Resort because we're going to check out the holidays here. A little bit of everything from the Disneyland Resort, Batu, California Adventure, we're going to try some food, see some characters, check out some shows, ride a couple rides, and just have a wonderful holiday time here at the Disneyland Resort, including while we're here in Batu, check out a light thing like all these other Star Wars nerds and friends of ours here. So, if you care to follow along me on this journey, let's go. Starting with the holiday decorations that occur at Disneyland Resort. Overlooking the main entrance, you can see the wonderful Christmas snowflakes and ice capades going on. Well, look at how beautiful all the green added on to the Main Street area. Look at that. Light poles have beautiful reefs, holly and jolly garland ornaments all right look at that disney showcase building gotta love the beautiful decorations here not only that our main characters that are usually doing their meet and greets around this area have wonderful new christmas attire now they're uh taking a step out for a moment because they're about to do a little march down main street so we'll see if we can catch them a little bit later today and they have all new winter holiday christmas outfits but of course the main centerpiece of anything that has to do with Christmas here at Disneyland is the wonderful, beautiful, tall Christmas tree, which everyone always has to get their photo in front of. And I love how the garland is wrapped all across Main Street itself, and in the middle is a wreath, a Mickey shaped wreath, of course. And at the end is Sleepy Beauty's castle, dressed up beautifully in her winter holiday best. And then, of course, Main Street looks even more beautiful at night when the lights turn on, which, of course, we will see a little bit later today. But right now, we are going to go on our way to the Fantasyland Theater because we want to catch Santa and his friends and that wonderful little holiday thing they got going on over there. Uh, they definitely tried something again this year for holidays version like they did for Pixar Fest and I really enjoyed that because that was a wonderful spot for some photo ops, meet and greets and whatnot and activities and fun food so we're gonna go over there and of course there is a holiday potato that I need to get at the Troubadour Tavern. Look at this catching a little bit of the march that's about to happen down Main Street start of the march down Main Street but we got a good view of the costumes the new holiday costumes for some of our favorite characters so that was wonderful but we'll see if we can get a better view of them a little bit later I really like Donald's uh, sweater that he has on there that nice little blue color goes well on him Goofy's always looks a little goofy to me Mickey had kind of like this like messenger boy kind of vibe to it kind of like a newsy in a way but older I don't know wasn't a big fan Minnie of course looks lovely but now Continuing on to the back, to the theater, to see the funness that is Santa and his holiday friends. The pathway leading up to Small World is also well decorated. Got wonderful Small World reefs on the light posts. These are white to match lovely with Small World's ride facade. And of course, during Christmas time, it's decorated for It's a Small World holiday. It usually doesn't change very much year to year. We'll see if we can try to get on a little bit later today. And then of course, at nighttime, the lights turn on. I believe they start around like 4 or 4.30. They'll turn on and they also have a little bit of a projection show on the front. They're about every about 15 or 30 minutes, I believe. So even when you're waiting in line or just want to see a beautiful show, it's worth seeing. There we are. 
at the Fantasyland Theater. We have holiday fun with Santa and friends. And what I've seen so far, we're in for store for a bunch of fun. But I'm excited. And then, of course, Shubert Tavern, we're going to be ordering some food over there. We did a mobile order. Uh, mobile order is about an hour out, so we should be here roughly about that long. We got these wonderful little decals of snowflakes on the floor, too, with little Mickey shapes on them. Even the trees on the side here are lit up. Look at that. And this is why mobile ordering is actually a pretty good option because the standby for that one is pretty lengthy. Oh, yeah, that's what they're doing. We're doing, we're singing uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer right now. That's pretty cool. Oh, and Santa is out about meeting people right now at the moment. Here we have actually signs of directions that are actually valid. We've got Meet Santa to the left, which we already just saw to the left over there. Photos with Disney friends apparently to the right. If you need ramp access, holiday goodies are over there. Well, Troubadour Tavern, but maybe there's a table over there. I don't know what's going on over there. Holiday trees to our right and the craft workshop fun activities are to the right as well too. Well, we already put in the cute photo op. It's like a postcard to Santa or holiday fun with Santa friends. Cute little chubby snowman right there. Happy holidays, Mickey stamps. Love it. Oh, and that looks like the Mickey that's from that uh, Pluto's tree or Pluto's Christmas tree. That looks like the type of Mickey. As they're saying, let it snow. Look what's happening. It's actually snowing. Or at least snoping. You don't want to catch on your tongue though. Trust me, it does not taste good. Let's see what's at the craft section over here. I do know, of course, this is free for you to do. Photos, oh, so we continue down. The ramp over there is to catch the photos with Disney friends. But it looks like we, uh, oh, you can also ma make a letter to Santa. Well, let's go to this table over here and see what fun activities we can do. So yes, indeed, looks like we can, uh, we can write a letter to Santa. We got our writing instruments right there. Oh. Ariel's asking me what's my holiday wish list. Or we can help Mickey and Minnie build a snowman. And then I'm assuming. And those are to make paper chains. Paper chains. Okay, paper holiday chains for decorative purposes. They put the vinyl applique on the bottom here, so it looks like that. Got the garland, beautiful bows all around. And there's the Gooster and Pluto taking their photos with friends in front of this lovely Christmas tree. Love the backdrop. They did a very good job here. They got the projections over there on the, on the stage. This little snow fork going on. This is so cool, very immersive. I love it. And it looks like there is the end of the line should you want to meet any of the characters. But I do know that the uh, the big jolly elf himself is over here taking photos as well. Yes. Oh, yep, there he is. He's meeting with uh, the naughty and the nice kids this year. So here we are, we're waiting a little bit because we're trying to see, we did hear word that Miss Clarabel Cow will be making an appearance. Pluto and the Gooster are still making very good time here meeting all their guests. So the line goes around this way up around and over, but you get a wonderful photo opportunity. Of course, as much time as you like to interact with the characters. But I did hear that roughly from about this point in time at the end of the line, that's probably close to about an hour or so, give or take. Same thing applies for Santa Claus over here. His luck queue looks a little bit longer, but it's more spread out. That one, most of it's in the tucked in corner over there. But this too is about an hour's long worth. And we did hear from a wonderful cast member. When it comes to Santa, how I believe in Santa, yes, I do still believe in Santa. Santa represents Christmas and holiday season for all of us, for the little kids, for the tall kids, those of different colors, different origins, different ethnicities, different backgrounds. So Santa is representative of that. Um, so yes, there will be different variations of Santa, but they are still the one and true Santa. So little ones that are watching this video, whatever Santa you get, that is the Santa. That is Santa himself right there. So just so you know, the Santa that you may see in line may change while you're in line right before you get to see them. And this is pretty cool. So we were talking about the wrap that's down here on the bottom floor. 
So this trail is actually the line for the queue. They have learned a little bit since Pixar Fest that uh, instead of having a little bit of a madness with all the stuff hanging around here and being too craziness, they built this pathway of cobblestones. Well, not real cobblestone. And that is the queue line. Same thing with this side here if you're waiting for the characters. And every so often, they have little jokes or riddles. And then every so often there will be something going on on stage here. There could be the Dickens Brass Band. Uh, there could be one of the carolers singing. There could be a Christmas story time of talking about a ghost of Christmas past and present, yours included. Um, but it goes off so often here. You'll see a couple host characters, as well as every so often, as we saw when we first got here, it was snowing. Oh, or they'll play some cartoons. And this one in particular, I'm assuming, is going to be a Christmas cartoon. Oh, it's Pluto's Christmas tree. I love that show. That was such a good cartoon. And there is Clara Bell. She actually made an appearance right now. Normally she is a roamer, like she'll be walking around taking photos, but she decided this time she wanted to be center of attention in front of the tree. So there she is taking photos with her friends. We're hope. Unfortunately, we did not get to see Clara Bell. They cut off the line before we got to her. It was, it was a crap shoot. You know how it is sometimes. But I did hear some brass music happening out here. And sure enough, the Dickens Brass Band is out here. So let's listen to them for a moment. Standing a little offshoot, so this would be what is it? Stage right, audience left. This little area right here, if you remember from Pixar Fest, this is the area where they had the uh, uh, Merida meet and greet. Well, they told me that this may get a little colder by a particular princess or ice queen, I should say, who may be taking residence right over here in this corner. It could be her, or it could be another surprise, or maybe her with a mix of surprises of other uh, Disney characters. But that is something to, that is of a pretty good, reliable source that this corner may get decorated here come Tuesday. Or actually, by the time this video gets posted, this would probably be most likely decorated and have that char that, cat, that character be here for meeting and greets. That would be pretty good. Because if it is who I think it is, Elsa, you can't see her unless you're over at California Adventure. So this is going to be good to be able to see her here with a nice little beautiful backdrop going on. And there it is. One of the items I was looking forward to most, the Thanksgiving potato. A hot baked potato. You got some turkey on there. Some cranberry. Um, some like onion straws of some sort. Like some sort of stuff. And I'll put the ingredients on here. It's Thanksgiving dinner. It's perfect. It's wonderful. No, this is good. Uh, the beef one looked very good too. We'll get that for another time around. But this is a five out of five. This is a must have. It's literally thanks it's Thanksgiving. That's what it's a holiday. It's right here. It looks like the uh, storytellers are out and about now. Hopefully they'll talk about the, the Christmas carol. That'd be nice. And said, Ray, I'm the ghost of Christmas present. And I look like that. What? <laughs> oh, and the ghost of Are you the ghost of Christmas future? And with that, I made my, uh, I think that's an official cameo appearance. I think, I think at that point, I think I consider myself a uh, official cast member, I believe. I think that gives me also acting credits, IMDB. I think so. Pretty sure. If not, at least it should be. 
but with now a uh, full belly from the wonderful delicious potato. My only real complaint about it is that every ingredient that's on it, except for the potato part itself, they need more of it. More of the gravy, more of the turkey. Turkey was very minuscule, especially when we saw what the uh, roast beef look one looked like, that one or the brisket. That one had lots of slices on it. But anyways, we're gonna walk a little bit and we're gonna check out Toontown because Toontown always has wonderful decorations as well. Brown light poles, some of the areas of the Toontown buildings have garlands and ornaments around there. Oh, look at Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. Oh, that's cute, look. The ribbons or the bows at the front entrance, they're checkered pattern like a yellow taxi. That is so cute. On the firehouse, you can see that it's even themed to that like a fire department would have. You got fire hydrant, Dalmatian color bone uh, balls up there, fire hoses, the garland. That's wonderful. The gag warehouse, you got a rubber chicken, a motor mouth, uh, googly eyes. Oh look, the rubber chickens even have little Santa outfits on them. Fireworks wreath, it's burnt because of all the fireworks that burn on it. That's crazy, I love it. Or is this horse collar, the gym, punching bags, gloves, bats, all the sports and athletic equipment up there. Oh, I didn't realize that. It's Dr. Drill and the dentist and it's candy above the dentist. That, okay, get the irony there? Now I love it. The clock shop garland has parts and watches and gears and levers and springs. And this one's lighty up like, oh, cause it's on top of the camera shop. So it's like flash bulbs going off. Look at that. And right above the post office, postcards and stamps. Oh, that is funny. I love it. The decoration, cartoon money and dollars and cents above the bank. City Hall being patriotic, red, white, and blue. But look at that. I just love that. The Gooster's house, garland and decorative bows that match his colors. Minnie's house, a heart-shaped pink reef up top here, but then she puts out her Christmas tree out front. Mickey, of course, decorates his in reds and golds. That's his traditional uniform brand mark that he has. Oh look, Gooster's out front taking photos and meeting his friends. But then look at him, Mickey's got a Corsair tree as well too, with a train, because obviously, you know, runway railway, right? Makes perfect sense. Going over, oh look, Pluto. He's doing a meet and greet right now. The twirling flowers of death right there. But then Donald's boathouse, he's got a wonderful, I like the anchors and, and nautical ropes. That's a cute looking garland, I like it. Here is a tip that I don't like to share too often, but I'm going to right now for Holiday Small World because we're about to go on right now. It's almost a walk-on because everyone is lined up here for the parade and this area is a little bit kind of, you know, maybe there's a lot of traffic and congestion kind of come up this way. So that's why the wait time right now during up to the parade and shortly right after is the best time. But then a few minutes right after the parade ends, Everyone is pretty much right in this region right over here. It's going to mad rush small world. And then you'll see his time go from five, 10 minutes to 25, 30 minutes like that. And then probably even more so. Now, normally I would love to see small world more so with his bright brilliance and beautiful lights. But you know what? We're going to take the opportunity right now for a five minute wait. trip through the world in the eyes of the little ones small world 
holiday. Love that one. But now we are walking through, just going on a trip to another galaxy, planets far, far away. Because yeah, we're here in Batu. And as you can tell a little bit by this video, this is not an all comprehensive overview of the holidays here at Disneyland. This is just going to be a little bit of a taste. We're talking about what's going on in Disneyland, decorations, a little bit of the food. We'll talk about the Festival of the Holidays at DCA. We'll talk about some of the shows, the things that are happening during the holiday time here at the Disneyland Resort. And one of those things, for those in the Star Wars know and fans, is a little thing called Life Day. Now, Life Day is AKA Star Wars Christmas. Um, but Life Day from the Life Days to Christmas special back uh, in the 70s, that was a complete flop. So a group of Star Wars fans have decided to take that fake holiday and make it into a real holiday. So today we are here to celebrate Life Day as well too. So we'll be meeting up with uh, some friends and groups of other like-minded Star Wars fans who will be incorporating Life Day into this holiday season. Now this of course is only one day out of the season but here on Batu, they will be selling Life Day items, both merchandise and food, during the holiday time here, including some drinks at Olga's. Celebration of Life Day, you can see some people here who are going to be celebrating wearing red because you would wear red robes for Life Day. We are a fun group here with the Star Wars nerds. Uh, we even have some of them make commemorative wristbands. This one says the Black Spire Outpost, November 2024, Life Day. And it's cool like Darth Maul color, which is really nice. Some of you have buttons, some of you have pins, and we share a share alike. And there's that old walking bag of fur. Oh, we just gave him one of the wristbands there. So, oh, and there's Ray Skywalker. So right now we're a little bit early for Life Day festivities, but during the Life Day event, usually there's the West Coast and of course the East Coast spot too. We partic participate in the Life Day here. Um, the West Coast, if you want to be really involved with this for the Life Day, uh, follow a group called Galaxy Edge Explorers. They are wonderful. Find them on Instagram. I'll put a little thing about them here. And they have all the information, big Star Wars fans of our uh, and friends of ours. So later we're going to be meeting up near the Rancor Wall. And if you know where that is, I'm gonna show you that in a second. And then we're gonna meet, we'll sing some Life Day carols, and then we'll go to the tree, uh, the, the wishing tree and, and talk about those loved ones who have passed and went to the grave beyond, uh, and then make our wishes for the next year. And have some fun, we'll take a photo, we'll take a uh, hollow pic here, hollow scan in front of the Millennium Falcon, everybody who's there for Life Day. And yeah, it's a fun time. And there's also processional as well, too. Everyone's going to bring their glowing Life Day orbs or lightsabers and walk through town of Batu for the photo op. It's a one time. I don't know if we'll be here for all of it, but I'll try to show you as much as I can. As we were walking through Batu, we were like, ooh, Aranto sounds good, but we didn't think there was anything special going on for the holidays. And sure enough, there was something. A Pujali wrap, which has a capicola, some ham, pesto, some other stuff. It's pretty much a like a an Italian sub, you know, Italian wrap, uh, Star Wars version. Everything in here I absolutely love on its own. So I'm gonna try it and I have a feeling I'm gonna enjoy this one. So but let's give it a bite. That pesto, oh my goodness. Capricola, good amount of slices, the cheese and everything. Oh, this is delicious. I actually would like it warm. This is a cold wrap. So I actually would have preferred if it was maybe toasted or heated in some way. So because of that, I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five, but this is delicious on a hot day. Ooh, good alternative. This is one of my most favorite of all snacks and one of the things I look forward to most during this time of year. Throughout Life Day and of course, usually through the holiday season, this is absolutely amazing. It is called the Kashik Cheese Branch and it's, a, uh, it's not warm, it's cold, but it's just, if you love cheese, you love garlic, you're gonna love this. Oh, it's amazing. You have to get at least a few of them before, you know, before the end of the season. And this time they're serving with a Katsakas special Alfredo cheesy sauce of sorts. Got a little bit of, you can see there's some spice in there. So we're going to give this a try. It smells wonderful. Oh yeah, look at the burnt on cheesy goodness. Mm. Um, that, it's five out of five on its own, but let's try it with the sauce.
Mmm. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, that's delicious. That kicked it up five more notches. That's a 10 out of five. Garlicky, cheesy, Alfredo y, spicy. Well, not very spicy. There's a little cayenne redness to it. Yeah, you know, on a scale of 10, it's a two. Very mild. But the cheesiness, garlic, oh my goodness. Must have this one. I can't, I can't give this enough stars. This is wonderful. I went to Casecas to get this bucket here that I wanted so bad. Uh, so if you know the uh, wood carver stand that's right over there, they have a version of this, a real version made out of wood of a Wookiee's face. So I'm going to assume it's Chewbacca most likely. Uh, but this one, they put a pupper bucket that says Life Day. A happy Life Day. So I figured, why not? It's Life Day. Get it. On the back, got the Tree of Life. Got family, joy, and harmony. Love it. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. And it does come, uh, depending on where you get it, but it does, I got the... Uh, the popping grains version. This is a spicy Cajun with a hint of lemon. Not a big fan of it, so I'm probably going to be eating those. But this is really cool. And Chewbacca is my favorite character of Star Wars. So I saw the Sarjean snow cap, which apparently is Coca-Cola slushy with a and cinnamon. Ooh, Coca-Cola and cinnamon slushy. Two different slushy. A sweet cream cheese and a Dalgonia crisp. Which looks like a like a toffee honeycomb crisp on the top. Ooh, that cinnamon is interesting. Oh, I like that. So far, that's a that's a good four out of five. But I want to put some of the sweet cream in there. Maybe it make taste a difference. That's better. Interesting. It's a cinnamon coke, frozen cinnamon coke. It's pretty good. Not my favorite. I like that little slice that they had prior, previous to this one. This is a four and a half out of five. Very good. I'll definitely get one more before the uh, holiday season is over. That's the big guy himself right there. <laughs> oh, and this guy, look at these. They got the uh, Santa mode on their lightsaber with the candy cane. Love it. And if you listen closely, you can actually hear some music going blurring from it. Oh, that is so cool. I was waiting here for uh, some more people to show up, but these are the lyrics we get for Life Day Celebration. Now, they got some really cool Christmas song, Snowy the Tauntaun, and all the songs are sung in the pattern of our earthly versions of these songs. So like Frosty the Snowman, so when you say Snowy the Tauntaun was a very noble, be you know, it's how you say it. You got droidal, 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 which is droidal, droidal, droidal. I root out the Red Nose Rainier as in Solo, the Karelian Smuggler. I'm freezing in a hot ice cave. I'll be home for life day. And it's beginning to look a lot like life day. Gotta love all the various robes and outfits. Love it.
and that was the uh, March for Life Day where we got finished singing the carols over there. Walk around past the Thai Echelon and then we're all going to meet in front of the Melian Falcon for a large Life Day group photo. And look, everyone's already starting to crowd in here very nicely. Got some people still coming in here. Fill it in, fill in all the dead space. Oh, that's the wrong ride. The wishing tree. We're all going to stand around it here. This is the one that's in front of the uh, lightsaber build. Shh, we're not supposed to know that the uh, lightsaber area. But the tree here is a symbol of remembrance as well as fortune. It's called the wishing tree because you see these ribbons right over here, ever wonder? So legend has it that you tie a ribbon after making a wish and the ribbon will fall off after obviously, you know, weather and wear and tear. And at that point, your wish will come true. This is also make a little bit of a somber prayer to the galaxy, Digi, for those that we lost this past year. So we're going to count to three. Speak their name loud, filter it through the tree. We remember them in that way. One, two, three. Pablo. And then I would like to have somebody come and read the invocation for Princess Leia, would you come join me over here? I think This holiday is yours, but we all share with you the hope that this day brings us closer to freedom and to harmony and to peace. No matter how different we appear, we are all the same in our struggle against the powers of evil and darkness. I hope that this day will always be a day of joy in which we can reconfirm our dedication and our courage and more than anything else, our love for one another. This is the promise of the Tree of Life. Eyes of the diehards, I really appreciate it. A huge round of applause for everybody. This is And with that, we leave Batu for Life Day 2024. It's one of my favorite things to do. I brought my, here's my little Life Day orb. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do here. November 17th and usually there's another day as well for those people who can't necessarily get the reservation on uh, Life Day itself proper on the 17th but if you ever get an opportunity and you are a Star Wars fan like myself do it it's fun um, it may not be your cup of tea necessarily the singing and everything but it, it's really fun and you get to meet a lot of cool people and a lot of fellow Star Wars nerds and it's always fun but so that is one part of the holidays here at Disneyland unfortunately you won't be able to experience it for the rest of this season but keep it in mind for next year but now we're going to head back into the park check out some of the decorations decorations with the lights on now because the sun is obviously set and then we're going to hop away over to dca to see what's over there made our way over here to Nolens. see some beautiful lights up here on the veranda of club 33 beautiful beautiful lights ah this is look at this I mean, come on. Oh, I don't know if the lights are supposed to be off there. Or maybe there was no lights. Don't know. Got these uh, Christmas ornaments hanging out. Oh, like Santa's hanging off the, the iron. That's pretty cool. Of course, some blue lights above the blue bayou. Makes perfect sense. Not doing it this time around, but I do know that the... Uh, Mint Julep Bar has a couple of special items, a peppermint Mickey shaped beignet, as well as a specialty mint julep. So the ride is currently closed right now. Uh, we do have a virtual queue for a little bit later. Hopefully we'll be still around and ride it. But of course it's the, one of the overlays for the holiday season outside of the small world here at Disneyland is going to be that of the Haunted Mansion Nightmare Before Christmas. Now hot take here. I hate this ride. I love the ride itself in regards to Haunted Mansion. Absolutely love Haunted Mansion. Hate the overlay. Give me all the bad comments you want. I am not a fan of Nightmare Before Christmas. I am not a fan of turning a spooky Haunted Mansion as it's supposed to be and turning it cutesy and kitsy. I get it during Christmas time because obviously it's more holiday-esque. But why ruin all of Halloween with it as well too? That's my personal opinion. I, I know it takes some time for the layover aspect of the turnover, the crossover. 
but I would rather it be scary till Halloween come November 1st and however long it takes to do it, overlay it, and then from that point in time, all of Christmas and into the first part of January, then it could be Holiday Mansion. But give me all of Halloween first before you convert that into the, the monstrosity that is Nightmare Before Christmas Holidays. Hate it. But yeah, that's the other ride you can do here during the holidays. Over here at the Harbor House Galley, they do have an item that is hot. And literally and figuratively, they're gingerbread cookies. The line wraps around all the way over there. It's probably at least a good 30 people deep, so I'm gonna skip it for today. But I have heard nothing but great things about these gingerbread cookies. So I'm gonna be based upon just from what I'm hearing from reputable sources, definitely worth getting. Just, I don't wanna wait in that at least half hour line. Most of the restaurants in Disneyland are gonna be serving some sort of specialty item for the holidays, including Hungry Bear. Um, which I believe has a, app, a funnel cake of some sort, a holiday version. We're not going to get that. We're going to save our, our foods for the Festival of the Holidays because I really enjoy those foods right there. But if you do want to get a good comprehensive overview of the foods here, like a foodie guide of sorts, there is one available on Disneyland's website. I'll put a link to that as well too. But even better so, my buddy SoCal Disney Dad Traver did some good videos on both Disneyland and California Adventure on especially food offerings that both of them provide. And I will link to his videos here so that you can check them out as well as in the description below. And while you're there, give him a like and a follow as well. Uh, and of course, we can't leave the park without seeing wonderful Sleeping Beauty's castle. All dressed up in her beautiful lights. Look at all that, like icicles hanging down. Look at the colors of the blues, the golds, the purples. It's like her dress actually, the pinks and the blue but it just looks absolutely lovely in there. Look at that. Wow, amazing. And then look at Main Street. Oh, look at that view. The tree right down there. The garland going across the street. Oh, that's a beautiful picture right there. That's a million dollar view right there. Plaza Point over here is a store that always carries Christmas items throughout the whole year, not just during the holidays. Definitely worth a visit. Just look at how wonderful the tree looks at night too. Amazing. It's a well-known fact in Disney lore that right there, Walt's apartment hanging up there above the fire department is a light that was always left on in remembrance of Walt because the lamp would always be put on when he was in attendance here at the park. So in his memory, they always leave it on. But during Christmas time, they replaced that lamp with a little mini Christmas tree that always stays on, so. Spot for a wonderful view down Main Street. Come up here to the Main Street train station. And look at this, all of Main Street area. Left and right, you can see the beautiful lights and that wonderful tree off there in the distance. Also, if you do want that perfect picture in front of the tree facing down of Main Street, well, actually, take that back. They usually always have like two or three different photo pass members, which looks like it's the same case. Because the tree is so wide, you really can't get a view of Main Street at the same time. So you go in the line right over here, ends right over there. And once you reach the front, the photo pass member is going to divide you up into one of three sections usually. And then uh, you get the tree in the background. You won't get the full tree. You can't get that into frame. Usually you get up to like, you know, right there on the tree. There goes the uh, red trolley. And it does have a Christmas wreath on its front and back or back in front, whichever side is front, I don't know. Here on Buena Vista Street, they decorate decent enough, but not as much as on Main Street in Disneyland. The majority of the decoration is gonna be past that. To our Jewish friends and neighbors, Julia's cats and sons, you see a, a lib menorah right there, menorah ears, lots of blue, silver, got the dreidels hanging up on there. Not as impressive as just still as beautiful a tree here in Buena Vista right in front of Carthay Circle. There is a tree lighting ceremony every day. I believe at 4.50 is the time, I'm pretty sure. It's about 6.30 right now, so we did miss the majority, if not pretty much everything when it comes to show times. But at least I'm going to mention them as we progress through the night. We're really going to try a lot of stuff for Festival of the Holidays. Hopefully we'll catch at least one show of Mostly Kosher. Because unfortunately this year for Festival of Holidays and a lot of the entertainment, 
As we know, Disney has really dropped the ball when it comes to entertainment. They've been cutting a lot of things, lots of schedules and whatnot, including festival holidays. So not only do they have less performances happening, but even the bands and the performance groups that are performing get less opportunities to perform. So Mostly Kosher is only going to be playing eight days throughout all the festival holidays, which is completely insane to me. They're one of the greatest bands out there, especially with regards to that of Jewish style uh, folk song. But outside of that, they're just a great band to listen to. But that's the way Disney does it, unfortunately. Um, oh, there's Gooster right there having fun with people. Since we're here in front of the uh, Carthay Circle Fountain, we'll mention one of the brand new shows that's occurring, and that is the uh, musical Christmas Ma Mariachi Arregla de Disneyland y Miguel. So they're going to be floor warm. I think it's actually kind of on one of the sides of the fountain. I'm not 100% sure. Talk about Christmas. It's kind of like a, a mini version of Viva Navidad from what I understand. But then with Miguel thrown into the mix. So here for the Festival Holidays, the main corridor of DCA. This area is stretching all the way down to the Paris Gardens. As well as heading a little bit into the Hollywood Land lot back over there. Are going to have the areas for the food booths. But you got to pick up a sip and savor pass. You can actually buy the items a la carte. But this gives you the best value. So really there is two types of passes in which you can get a four tasting or an eight tasting card. We end up getting the eight tasting card. So the four tasting card gives you four options of anywhere in here, not non-alcohol though, so no alcoholic beverages. But you can get the uh, you know the juices, the sodas, the snacks, the desserts, the main entrees, those you can pick up with any of any of the taps here. So a four option is gonna cost you uh, $32 and there is no discount whatsoever. So you break it down, it's $8 an item, which is still pretty good because a lot of the items here are $9, $10, but there are a few that are in the $7 range. So do not waste your tabs on anything that's lower than what you pay, you know, per item. But the eight, the eight option one, it comes at $63, but if you're a pass holder, a Magic Key pass holder, it comes out to $58. So you save $5 there alone. Plus you get this nifty lanyard, which is actually really pretty this year. It says, Festival of the Holidays, it's colorful, it's bright, uh, rainbow effect, it's really pretty. Uh, but the other ones, if you're not a pass holder, you get just a basic generic Office Depot black one. So if you do the math, it ends up being about $7.80 something cents for a non-pass holder. But if you're a pass holder, it ends up being to about $7 and a quarter. Uh, so that's your magic number. Try to, don't waste tabs on anything that are less than about a seven and a quarter, okay? If you do find something that's like, I need to have it, Pay for it a la carte. Don't waste a tab on them there. Do it later. Also, a tip for you as well too is to use your Sip and Saver Pass. If you think you know what you're going to get, like say you want to use up all eight items, you can go to any of the food booths and actually just choose your whole selection right then and there and choose it up right there so that you can say, okay, I want this one from this booth, this one from that booth, this one from that booth, and it's already on a receipt. So then all you got to do is then go to the booth. They say, you know what? Now it's time to get that slider. It's time to get that dessert. Go to that booth way in line and pick up your item because you already checked it in because you already took a tab for it. But what I will do is I'm going to, even if we don't get items from certain places, I'm going to at least show you what's available at those particular spots and tell you what I would have at least purchased if I had the opportunity. Starting off here with Merry Mashups. That's going to be the one that's uh, pretty much closest to the entrance of that of Avengers Campus. And we have the holiday mash bowl, chicken, cheddar, mashed potatoes, and turkey gravy with cranberry stuffing. M&M's peanut butter fudge cake and a glacier margarita. To be honest with you, I'm getting a holiday mash bowl. I think that's what I need to get. In the little uh, cave area over here, uh, cove, like that's a better word, behind where Spidey does his slinging, there's grandma's recipes. And over here, they got a couple items. One in particular I'm interested in is the barbacoa tamada res. You got the cookie dough yule log, which I heard is so popular that they pretty much almost ran out of it today and that Café de Olla uh, cold brew. Walking our way over to the Redwood Creek Challenge because we want to see what's, how decorative it is for the holidays. But even walking through Grizzly Peak over here, look at how lovely they even put some lights here. Some popcorn garland. Simple yet elegant. I always like to affectionately call these Fireflies cotton bottles. Obviously they're multicolored with reds and yellows and blues. And if you ever wanted to ask and say, hey David, what is your favorite of all the hol holiday decorations that happen here at the Disneyland Resort? 
It's a simple answer and it's one and one only. I just absolutely love how they give this guy an ugly Christmas sweater. And I mean, look at that. It's electrified ho 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 with the trees and the snowflakes. I love it. It's my favorite decoration of all the resort. Love all I know is that when it comes to holidays, they do this pretty well. Obviously, my favorite time when they can transform this for Villains Grove. But Santa's holiday visit here is always hilarity. Of course we do. Oh, there he is. I didn't even have to wait for him. Hello, Santa. How you doing? Um, I'm on the nice list this year, right? Oh, man. I did. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, you had me there for a minute, Santa. Thank you. Perfect. I'm going to leave you extra cookies just for that, okay? Yes, okay, wonderful. But sugar-free, because I know you're a little bit on a diet right now, okay? Mrs. Claus told me. Okay, I'll slip you one sugar cookie. Yeah, okay, great. But don't tell Mrs. Claus. Okay, bye now. Also for the little ones, both by age and by heart, they have a Red Rock Creek Challenge Trail. You go through, let me open this up here. You go through the trail, find the little letters, and then there's a little word you have to decipher here. What is Santa's favorite song? Figure that out, you gotta look for the presents and each present has a, it's color coded, got a letter, find the word, come back over here and you might get a wonderful prize from our famous Wilderness Explorer Rangers. Also, just so you know, the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail is only open till 7.45 uh, per the schedule for today. I believe that's pretty much the par for the rest of the days. Uh, and Santa is available for visits up until that point in time, but don't risk coming at the last minute because they may cut the line at a certain point if the line gets too large. Uh, before Santa, you know, says, oh, ho, ho, I have too many. Like, you know, all those cookies he has in one night. Way too many. This is Claus and yells at him. Here's an example of the prize that we're looking for there. A red box with the letter J. So we'll go over here, put the J over the red box, and later we'll put in the letters and fill out the code. The tire swing, which is always pretty cool. I wish I could go on it, but no. They have uh, garland and jingle bells going across it. I would love to go on this if I could. It used to be able to be like adults and kids could do it, but then it ended up being like a weight limit after a certain time. There's another one, a green one with the letter N. And should you make it in time, this would be where Santa would have the opportunity to meet Santa. And there is Santa meeting with some of his friends. They're going to tell him what they want for Christmas. And we figured it out. I'm not going to tell you the word, but uh, let's just say you hear that. That's uh, a clue. But anyways, this is your reward. It's a cool little Santa sticker. He's giving you the thumbs up for a job well done. Holiday Duets, which is over here by Grizzly River Rapids. This is the spot that's going to have the beautiful mac and cheese. There's a savory Kugel mac and cheese. There is a chorizo queso fundido mac and cheese, which is the soy riso vegetarian and the holiday duet, which is a little half portion of each one. So it's a double, it's a big portion. If you want either the, the chorizo or the savory uh, kugel, holiday duet, you get a half portion of each one. And the mule, which is a gin, elderflower, and ginger liqueur, cherry puree, cranberry and lime juices, etc. That actually sounds very delicious. From the holiday duets, we ended up getting the little savory duo, or holiday duo, whatever they call it. Half order of the kugel, and half order of the chorizo mac and cheese, and I did end up getting that cranberry holiday mule. I really want to try this uh, queso fundido style mac and cheese and it is made with the soy riso. A little chewier of a chorizo, good flavor and there is a little bit of a spice level to it too, a little kick, nothing dangerous, uh, two-ish, three-ish out of ten uh, when it comes to the spice level, it's actually very good. And the mac and cheese is the exact same mac and cheese as the other one, just doesn't have the crispy kugel aspect to it, but that was very good, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm going to give that one a four out of five. Now, let's try the uh, kugel, different blend of cheese. It's a little more creamier on that cheese, a little more garlicky, and that's actually a little bit better. I do like to put some chorizo on top of that. I would love it a lot more, but I'm gonna give, the chorizo was a four, I'm gonna give that one a solid four and a half out of five. Cranberry holiday mule. Mmm, mm, that's good. Elderflower, I know that, elderflower core. Like a little, like a, it's citrusy, that's for dang sure. The ginger beer, of course. But it almost tastes like there's some grapefruit in there. There is a candy gummy slice of lemon on top. That's a gummy, it's not an actual uh, fruit, it's a gummy. 
But this is actually really good. I'm enjoying this one. This is a nice refreshing drink. Um, four and a quarter out of five. It's better than a four, not a four and a half. Four and a quarter, that's a solid. Obviously it's a little past it, but this is where the toy drummer shows would be held at, right in front of the lighthouse here before San Francisco and the pier. Times vary throughout the day. And then also not only that, usually characters will come out as well too. Usually like Chip and Dale and those types of guys. There is of course a holiday world of color going on right now. And is what some people are waiting for at the moment. And during the time here, we also have some merchandise and artisans happening. Usually always fun to see the glass ornaments. Yeah, pretty some of these look. Here's some of the specially merchandise for Festival of the Holidays, including this lovely crew neck sweater. Ooh, that's real nice. Got the branded mug as well. Ornaments. This spirit jersey, that's really cool. Festival Holiday for all the elements of the holidays here, as well as DCA, a menorah, the fun wheel, Carthay Circle. Oh, and this crew neck sweater, this is actually the uh, Magic Key uh, special item. Okay, you know what, and how much is it going for right now? Let's see, where's the tag on that? $59.99 for this one. Okay, so that's the special Magic Key for today. I prefer the spirit jersey, I'm not gonna lie. I'd rather just have the spirit jersey. And some more stuff for my Jewish friends here. Shirts of Mickey and Minnie playing dreidel. Got the menorah mini uh, headbands. And they do light up, which is so cool. Lounge flight backpack, sweater, hoodie. So cool. Here at Bruise and Bites, which is right in front of Ariel's, right? There's the uh, chicken chicharron with basmati rice, herb chutney, and masala drizzle. So an Indian-inspired food. Uh, passion fruit, the rose lassi, non-alcoholic as well. A cranberry apple cinnamon seltzer, that's a hard alcohol. They do have some holiday beer flights here. And more festive beer flights. Oh, a churro ale. Oh wait, no, I think I've had that one before. I'm pretty sure actually. We're making, we're making our way over to the Paradise Gardens area. This is where a lot of the Latin Navidad celebration is going to be, including Viva Navidad, the street park. We missed it for today, but this is where Viva Navidad, the street party, would be held at. My tip is, so first of all, Viva Navidad is only performing on weekends this holiday season. They did a cut back a lot of performances uh, due to budget cuts for entertainment. Uh, so on the weekends, Viva Navidad performs, and on the weekdays, the new show, uh, what's it called? Mirabelle's uh, Gifts of the Season is going to be performing instead. And it's going to be kind of like a very familiar, like the... Um, when you think about the Coco show that happened during Dia de los Muertos, you know how it was like right over here? That's going to be the same essence of Mirabel's gift of the season, that show right there. Uh, but with regards to Viva Navidad, which is my personal favorite Christmas show, I absolutely love seeing it. Um, the street party is going to be right in this main area where I'm walking at right now. But the best spot, the best spot if you can, you have to, you have to get here early if you want to get it, is right here. So you see that wreath right in the middle? This is the dead center of the Viva Navidad street party. So that trash can will be kind of like the barricade. So if you can find yourself a spot somewhere right in here, usually they're gonna put a little marker right there, right here, they'll put a line heading over to the beer section over there where you can cross. If you can find yourself this spot right here, you're gonna have the best middle spot view for the whole show scene to the left seen to the right and most importantly seeing the main center flow where uh, the three caballeros will be at there's also a meet and greet spot over here where usually there is a goofy dressed up as a mariachi mickey and minnie as well too usually but also the three caballeros when they're not performing in the viva navidad street party they'll come here for a wonderful meet and greet and here on the stage there's going to be lots of performing artists that happen on the garden bandstand lots of wonderful art and then most of the food that's uh, here at the Paris Garden Grill is going to be that of a Mexican Latin affair. So we got like things like chilequiles, carnitas, torta, al pastor tacos, chile verde flautas, huaraches, esquites, loaded chips. They got a chocolate cake flan. Ooh, good stuff there. Eventually I do want to get that chocolate cake flan. We want to step inside to a uh, Boardwalk Pizza is I want to see what specialty holiday pizza they got and that is indeed a holiday pizza. So it's a roasted turkey with roasted butternut squash, cranberries, arugula, fig, and cranberry sauce. 
Next up on Winter Sliderland, they got beef brisket slider, an alabastor pork and pineapple slider, a jelly donut non-alcoholic punch, and a cookies and cream hazelnut hot cocoa and a hot butter pecan bourbon cocktail. I believe we ended up getting the Al Pastor pork and pineapple slider to try out. I do love me some good Al Pastor, so I'm hoping to have good success here. So we, yeah, we ended up getting the Al Pastor slider. It looks like it's got some pineapple salsa of some sort. The Al Pastor right there, chicken Al Pastor on a corn brioche bun. Normally I'm more of a pork Al Pastor type of guy, but that's very good. And there's a nice, decent amount of spice to it, where even I have to appreciate that. I have a really high tolerance for spice. So normally I'm like a eight, nine out of 10 type of guy. That has about a three going on a four kick level. And the pineapple works very well with it. I'm, and the, everything worked blended nicely. Mm, it's like a taco, it really is. Um, and it's enjoyable, it works very well. I enjoy that, four and a half out of five. A twist on traditions, we're trying out a couple of, oh actually just one item here. We have the barbecue pulled pork cornbread bake with creamy slaw, a turkey galantine croissant muffin slider, which is what we're getting. And then they have a, for a drink, the berry pomegranate paloma. I think I've had that one before. I don't think it was that great. And there it is. That's a good heaping amount of turkey, to be honest with you. That's a pretty good slide. A little cornbread. What is that? Croissant. It's a croissant muffin. Got the stuffing, cranberry sauce. It looks very delicious. Looks actually, look at that. It's a real muffin. It's a real honest to goodness muffin. Interesting. Okay, let's uh, I don't know how to get it. Let's right here. That herb mayo is a little different. I will admit But the cranberry the turkey the croissant That's a new that, I'm gonna make a sandwich like that after Thanksgiving leftover turkey croissant mayo Put some gravy and some turkey. That was delicious. This It's pretty good. Not as good as the al pastor slider. This is gonna give me a four out of five on this one But very good because of the various performances of the groups that are playing on certain days or whatnot, always check the schedule ahead of your visit here to the Festival of the Holidays. But here at the stage, that's right here in front of the wine bar, they usually have the acapella group. I know there's a singing acapella group. There might be some folk music going on, uh, but this is the stage we're gonna be at. So from Mary Mashes, we had to come back for this one because they ran out earlier. But we ended up getting the holiday mash bowl, which is chicken uh, with cheddar mashed potatoes, turkey gravy, cranberry and stuffing I would prefer actually turkey instead of the chicken to be honest kind of like a chicken nugget but the potatoes are good the cranberry the gravy it works very well my only real complaint is that it's chicken and not turkey but it's a good food item uh, four out of five I think I would honestly give it a four and a half or even a five out of five if it was turkey not chicken and then a Trevor over here, he ended up getting, what is this Trevor, the Yule Log of some sort? Cookie dough, Yule. Cookie dough Yule Log. I'm not going to have it, I already had too much sugar, but Trevor and his kids, they, they need more sugar, especially this guy right here. He, ta he needs lots of sugar. Actually, he doesn't need any more sugar. There you go. Okay, well, I can see based upon these guys devouring this, is it must have been pretty good, but Trevor, give me your take on it. Let's find out. I can taste the, the cake, because this is like a Swiss roll, like a... Um, a ho ho or a ho ho? Yeah, ho ho. Like a ho ho. Um, I can taste the cake, and I can taste kind of like a chocolate mousse. But it's supposed to be a cookie dough Yule log, and while I got the texture of the cookie dough in there, I got like a bite of the cookie dough. I couldn't taste it at all uh, because the the flavors of the other things were too overpowering. Okay, so a little bit of a misnomer there when it's like it's calling cookie dough Yule log. It doesn't really have much of a cookie dough to it, huh? It's in there. But yeah, unfortunately, um, a clash of flavors made okay. it made it kind of a miss. I know you're not a rating type of person, but I guess for you would be, would you get it again? Well, the item's fantastic. I guess I, I, I should say that, clarify. The item's fantastic. It's really good. Um, so I'd probably put it at a four out of five, but I'm a huge sweets guy. You are, yeah. Love sweets. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm disappointed because I was expecting cookie dough and I love cookie dough. But, um, but no, it, it's still it's still a really good treat. Good. One of the things I do love about this time of year here at DCA is that they always have some wonderful vendors with delicious foods and snacks. This one in particular, uh, Sarati Farzan Mar Mart. A lot of, it looks like from uh, India or Southeast Asia inspired snacks and desserts. This is uh, interesting. 
the uh, not the fact that there's jewelry here, but they actually have permanent jewelry that you, you don't have to buy necessarily. They got some essence oils, essential oils, and lip balms and other jewelry things here they can do. But if you want to get a permanent jewelry, they actually have the little carts right here, a little stand where you can get the permanent jewelry get fixed. And look at this stance with a stance socks booth here. And if anybody knows me, they know that I absolutely love stance and have about over 200 pairs. So uh, yes, I'm excited about that. So is there anything special because of the festival of the holidays? So we have these three here that are exclusive to Disney properties. Okay. So if you're out in Disney World, Disney Springs, you can grab So a Deadpool, ones. a Wolverine, or a Jack Skellington, okay. Everything else I'm seeing, I pretty much have seen, or, or Jet Parks. We've got these four here. Ah, uh, okay. So those will be exclusive for Festival Holidays, California, and Montreal. Stop with the sublimation. Stop it. I understand that the color and pretty and beautiful, ooh, I understand that. But you put these on a calf of a normal sized person, Mickey no longer looks like Mickey. He's gone. I know you changed the process a few years ago. It doesn't do any difference. Sublimation. Bye bye. Crew is good. That's fine. Stop with that. I'll stop it. I'll go to someone else. Odd Socks, I heard they're listening. Wow. Yeah, I'm calling you guys out. We made it down here to, uh, to Hollywood lot for the favorite thing. So we're going to end up getting a dessert before we end the night. But I made a mistake. So here at this stage, because I just saw, nope, oh, there's one there's one of the dancers right there. See? The Aztec dancing was actually on this stage. So I made the mistake. So check the show times. I really wish we would have made it. We missed it by about 10 minutes. So over here at Favorite Things, they have the uh, braised pork belly adobo with garlic rice. The dessert here was the sticky toffee pudding macaron. Mickey shaped chocolate macaron filled with vanilla buttercream day cake and salted toffee sauce. Unfortunately, they are out for the night, so we'll have to try that another day. And another drink that I will have another day will be the spiced coconut cocktail. Well, perfect timing. They're actually about to start the final performance of Mostly Kosher, which is the show. I absolutely love this Jewish Yiddish band. Love their music. So we're going to find a spot right now. It's starting in a few moments. That, I have to raise a lahayam to that performance. That's amazing. If you ever get a moment to see Mostly Kosher of all the groups that I've seen so far, they are, in my personal opinion, my favorite. They're hilarious. I'm gonna put the full show on my channel. So if you ever wanna catch out this performance that we just saw in its entirety, I'll have it there. Wonderful, wonderful time. And they only have a few more performances throughout the holiday season. So make sure you, if you plan to see them, plan accordingly, look at the calendar ahead of time and see when they're performing again. But we ended up getting a couple drinks because we needed to have a glass full for Lahayam. Uh, so I ended up getting the holiday margarita, which is a pomegranate slush margarita. And as you can see, I'm already halfway done. And it's pretty good. It's a little tart, but pomegranates tend to be pretty tart anyways. Um, I'm not really tasting the alcohol, which could be a bad thing or a good thing, depending on how you think about it. Uh, but overall, I probably wouldn't get it again. It's really too sweet for me. But it was okay, so I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. And just because we're nearby, after leaving most of the kosher, I wanted to talk about one last thing. 
and that is the stage setup over here at the waiting queue for the Grand Hyperion Theater. This is where Deadpool is having his uh, Christmas story time. Um, and yeah, here's where it's at uh, various times throughout the day. I've yet to actually see any of his shows when it first happened. I think now they're only down to his Christmas version. I think they took away all the other ones. Because the movie's been out for a few months and is currently streaming on Disney Plus anyways. So eventually this will probably go away pretty soon too. But yeah, story time with Deadpool is right here. Oh, of course, before we left, we could not walk out with some treats, but I realized that I forgot to mention about the the very famous candy canes that are going to be released here this year. So I picked up a card here. I'm going to take a picture of this and put it up on the screen for you to see. But Corey, right now, the Candy Palace is going to have them on December 1st, 3rd, 8th, 10, 15th, 17th, 22nd, and 24th. Trolley Treats will have it on December 2nd. 4th, 9th, 11th, 16th, 18th, 23rd, and 25th. Also, November 30th as well, too. Uh, wristbands and or mobile waitlist will be utilized for a chance to purchase one of the candy canes this year. The candy canes are not available through mobile order. A very limited number of candy canes will be available. And it's also one per guest per day. So again, if you really need these, these I mean, I got these one time just by pure coincidence. We're walking through a DCA. Had no intention to even know there was a release date for these. And all of a sudden, be like, would you want some? One of the cast members was right in front of here and said, would you like a wristband for a candy cane? And we're like, they're still available? Sure, why not? And I will admit, they're cool. They're nice. They're big and bulky. And a lot of people collect them and never use them. They just keep them for looks. They taste like normal candy canes, nothing fancy. And they were like 20 bucks or something like that. They were pretty pricey. And with that, that's going to do it for this journey here at the Disneyland Resort, Disneyland California Adventure for the holidays. Uh, this was a little different of a video than I normally would do, a little hodgepodge of everything, but I hope you enjoyed it. It's not an all-inclusive guide for what's there to do the holidays, but hopefully it gives you a good little taste both at Disneyland and DCA. So we're going to end it here uh, in the main Esplanade area because the fireworks are going to be coming off pretty soon. We're not going to stick around for that, but there is, of course, a holiday fireworks that's going to be the last thing i tell you about but i am not a fireworks person not that i don't enjoy fireworks but i'm not the type of person that's going to wait an hour hour and a half for a good spot oh look at that as i speak look at that some fireworks heading off so we're gonna <laughs> so with that being said we're gonna sign off on this video but before we do do me a huge favor give this video a big thumbs up a like for it subscribe to the channel if you're new here haven't done so already third hit the notification bell and of course follow me on social media, take it one step further at Big Red Journeys on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for even more content headed your way, including some more holiday content from here and other theme parks, including Knott's Berry Farm, Legoland, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, and so much more. So for me to you, thank you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Joy you Noel. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever it is that you celebrate. Be safe. Be merry. Love one another. And I'll see you on the next journey. Bye-bye now.